and I'll be cutting the pieces nine and three quarter inches. And I'm just going to cut these off with a hacksaw. Next I'm going to drill a hole and tap some threads in the end of the rod for a terminal screw. I'm drilling this off to the side of the center because it looks like there's a, a steel core to this. This one's a little more profound. I think it's probably meant to hold the anode together as it deteriorates. So I'm drilling it off to the side. And I'm using a stainless steel screw in here. And that's a six by thirty-two, three eighths inch long. And that one's done. And before I coat these with alum. I'm going to take a sanding block and sand them all down. Get all the dirt and grease and any oxides off of there so the alum sticks to it good. Before I was heating that alum and melting it in this uh, stainless steel bowl, but I don't know the quality of the stainless steel has started to eat away at the finish on it. So I'm going to try this porcelain covered bowl here this time. down from the top. And this is the brand of water filters that I'm using. Carbon block filters. And to get them ready, first thing you have to do is don't use them. So I take one of those plugs that I got and I put it in there. I'll use a hot glue gun to stick it in there. And just fit it in there and squish it down. The size of the piece I need to fit over the filter is going to be 9 inches by 8.5. Put a nine inch strip on this first. This tie is really some tough stuff. I've seen raincoats made out of this stuff. But I'm just coming with the utility knife and Yeah, 
I'm going to take that piece of Tyvek and wrap it around the filter. I don't take anything off of the filter. I fit, this is the 9 inch way and I fit it just underneath these plastic uh, caps on the ends. And I just squeeze it tight around there and take the hot glue then and seal it down. And after I get it stuck on there, I put a line of hot glue right down the seam to make sure it's sealed up. And then I'll go around these caps. The next thing I did is I drilled a pilot hole in through this plastic cap into the carbon. I took out a little bit of that plastic rim so I get right into the center of the carbon. And I'm going to put a stainless steel a sheet metal screw in there for the positive terminal. And that's what I'm sticking in there. And I wouldn't have had to put the Tyvek on there at all if I wasn't going to put it like in a big bucket of sand, damp sand, or in the ground. This would just keep it electrically insulated. I could have just stripped everything off like I did on this cell. This has just got the bare carbon open. And this one isn't going to be in electrical contact with anything else, like in a bucket of sand or anything. And that's what I was putting that tie back around here for. So it could breathe some water vapor in if I put it, a bunch of them in a bucket of damp sand. Or if I put them in the ground like I showed in the other video. But this case over here, I'm just going to leave it open. It's not going to be in electrical contact with any other cell. So you can do it this way too. I could, I was thinking I could just put it in a jar and put some, a little bit of water in the bottom of the jar to keep this moist too. And I think that would probably work too. Just take the cell, stick it in the jar and put a little bit of water on the bottom and then put a cap on and the moisture would stay in there. And I think that would help keep it hydrated too, but it'd be an individual cell. And I'll take my alum coated magnesium electrode and stick it in empty carbon filter. And then I'm going to fill around the magnesium and the inside of the filter with an electrolyte filler. And what I'm going to use for the filler, it takes about a cup, a cup or a little better to fill in between there. And what I'm going to use, this is a quart sand. It's used for sandblasting. This is a real fine sand. It's dry. I'm going to mix some alum with this. I got three quarters of a cup quartz sand. I'm going to mix a quarter cup of alum in with this and then pour it in around the electrode to fill up this uh, cylinder. Quarter cup. Mix it up a bit. On there. And now I'm just going to spoon it in. It's real dry, so it flows right in there. Just spoon it in and shake it down. So I put that whole cup in there. It's just a little bit known from the top. And now I'm going to put two tablespoons of water in here to activate it. Try to 
funnel it in. Oops. It takes about that much in order to get the filler all soaked, damp. A little bit slower this time. I don't want to get that screw corroded. Let me set it there and be able to see it. The voltage reading first. Uh, 1.74. That's pretty typical in the first making. And I'll switch over to milliamps. Uh, 70. Some milliamps looks like jumping around a little bit. Hold on. 75 milliamps going down. That's pretty typical. It seems like no matter what electrolyte I put in there, it seems to take a while for it to get established as a Currently, I have three of these cells hooked up in a series. This is the one I just made with a 25% alum mixture. And these two have 25% no salt in the mixture with the quartz sand. They don't have any alum in the quartz sand, but this one has a 25%. I haven't determined which one is better yet, but... This is what they're operating at right now. I've got them all hooked up to this flashlight. And they're drawing about 50 and a half milliamps. And the voltage is established as about 3.2. So do the math for the wattage I was pulling. But it's holding the flashlight at its full brightness, it looks like. And it seems to be pretty stable like that. It's hard to see that with the glare. Mm. This is the voltage when it's off. Three cells in the series. That's part of that. It's interesting, the voltage is higher now, current is lower, but higher voltage, lower current. Jumping around a little bit, huh? But it looks like it's building back up. Still haven't figured out why it does that. Why the voltages change like that. Now I have some other cells here with different mixtures. But I haven't seen any real benefit compared to these. These seem to be working the best. These work good, but I haven't really seen a benefit of mixing the alum and the no salt together. Even when I put a whole bunch more in this one. I haven't really seen a big improvement. So I'm going to stick with these here. These no salt ones might be a little bit better than the alum one. But these are older. It seems to take time to get these cells established to their output. I know a couple times I just kept these shorted for a while. And it actually improved the battery operation. This is all galvanic as far as I can see. There's nothing magical going on here. These rods will deteriorate just like a battery. But they shouldn't last a long time because they're so big. <laughs> and I did put some more 
water in these than just two tablespoons. That picked it up a little bit. But for me, I think I could probably use them for lighting like in my root cellar where there's no uh, power. Now it looks like the voltage dropped a little bit now and the current picked up a little bit. In this bear cell I have right here with no Tyvek, I hooked up to a Jewel Thief and it's handling it pretty good. It seems like these could replace an AA size battery. This one hasn't dried out at all yet. It doesn't seem, it seems like you need water pressure in order for the water to flow in and out of this uh, carbon cell. And this is still climbing a little bit. Voltage looks like the battery on this meter is about done. So this is the fun I've been having. Thanks for watching.